So last time I spoke about bartending, I scraped the surface of what it means to me, of how it's more of an art, a science, rather than just a way of getting people inebriated. I love that word, by the way. It derives from Latin, prefix in, meaning not, ebriated, meaning able to walk in a straight line. <laughs> now, behind the bar, we have a lot of different concepts and theories that we bounce back and forth. And there's one in particular I really want to share with you today. But before I do, are there any psychoanalysts in the room? Show of hands. No? Good. So I'm not stepping on any toes when I, with this speech. All right, so I was in New Orleans in July for Tales of the Cocktail. And Tales of the Cocktail is the largest cocktail festival on the planet. It's where bartenders and cocktail enthusiasts alike come together for knowledge and sharing. So I went to multiple seminars at Tales of the Cocktail for bartenders, by bartenders. And there's one in particular that really resonated with me. And they covered the third space theory. Now, before you understand the third space, it's essential to get into the first and second spaces. So the first space is your home, your castle. It's really where you, your comfort zone with your family, by yourself, or with your spouse, is where we do our rest and recovery. Second space is your place of work, your vocation. It's where you really slam the hammer. It's what brings the bread to the table. It's where we spend most of our time. And of course, the third space, which excites me the most and we've all been waiting for, the third space, which is essentially our home away from home. So this is the, that beautiful place where you can relax and really treat yourself the way you wouldn't be able to in the first or the second space. Now, now, this space is different for all of us. It really is. It's, it varies. So the examples could be your, your local library. It could be a barbershop for most men. It could be a restaurant, bar, or your local Toastmasters meeting place. It really varies. Let me use a couple examples. George, I'm going to use an example. Let's say you love landscaping, right? And there's a property you drive by every week. And you have to, you're just forced to admire it. It's so beautiful. So beautifully maintained, and it makes you feel relaxed. And that could be your third space. And Dory, I bounce back to you. It could be the golf course. It could be where you have your lessons by yourself and with your friends, and it makes you feel relaxed, it makes you feel good while you're over there. That could be your third space. Or, might I suggest, it could be my bar. You come to my bar, sit down, have a couple drinks, some laughs, that could be your third space. So it's essential to understand that the third space is very, very important. And it's not just for the bartender itself, sure, it's important for me to understand this concept because when you walk into my bar, I want to make sure you feel nice and that you want to come back and possibly create your third space. But for all of you, all of us, I should say, it's essential to understand not only our third space, you might have your third space already, but you haven't quite distinguished it yet. But to understand others' spaces, third spaces, to sympathize those spaces, is to really create human connection. So. With that being said, let me not show my back to you. <laughs> Wanna have some fun? And I raise my glass to you. In a toast, I invite you, actually, I implore you to come to my bar, have some fun, have some drinks, and maybe, just maybe, you'll find your third space. Cheers, and thank you.